How on earth did the Catholic Church end up with Pope Francis? I think I know how the Church got him, and that is there is a desire on the part of a, a universal church, a church that stretches across all the five or six continents, to kind of spread the wealth around, which is to say to spread the leadership around. So uh, Carol Watiwa or John Paul II was the first Polish pope. Uh, he was followed by Benedict. There has been some talk for a while about an African pope, but it wasn't to be this time. I think they decided, okay, well, let's go South America. Let's go to Latin America or South America. And they got Francis. Now, Francis comes out of a leftist political tradition in South America. I don't know if the other cardinals that selected him knew the extent of his leftism. Now, South America has had an economic leftism that goes back uh, a ways. But it looks like Francis is, is much worse than that. He's not just an economic leftist. He's not just redistribute the wealth. That would be one thing. But he is also a cultural leftist. He appears to be highly influenced by cultural Marxism. This is a guy who, you may almost say that instead of seeing himself as the church's missionary to the world, in other words, let's bring a Christian and Catholic message to the world and try to transform the culture in a Christian and Catholic direction, he sort of sees himself as the world's missionary to the church. So there are all these issues in the world, social justice, the issue of gay rights, the trans. So he goes, I will be the world's missionary. I will take those issues that are that have been my political and evidently cultural interest for a long time, and I will try to move the Catholic Church and its traditional positions more toward the world. So very sadly, moving the church toward the world instead of the other way around. Now, one man who has been caught in the middle of this is an Orthodox bishop in America named Bishop Strickland. Uh, what can we say about Bishop Strickland? Well, he's a bishop in Texas. He is a straight-laced guy. He's Orthodox. He's traditional. He believes in the church as it has existed for 2,000 years. He is also an obedient Catholic, which is to say that he will take orders from the Pope. But he has not hesitated previously to criticize the Pope because I think he realizes that this Pope is kind of a radical. This Pope is in some ways undermining. Now, the Pope is not directly going against any of the um, Catholic teachings per se. I haven't heard the Pope say abortion is a good thing, for example. He's not going to do that. The Pope, in that sense, for me, is Catholic. Uh, he's not going to repudiate the just war. He's not going to repudiate the idea of um, of the sort of special status of Mary, whatever the ensemble of Catholic beliefs, so the, the, the Pope is by and large staying within those, but the political and cultural upheaval that he's creating in, in, in that he's creating a sort of zone of not only acceptance, but almost enthusiasm for all kinds of sexually perverted behavior uh, that the Pope seems to think is, well, we got to approach it with sympathy. I don't necessarily agree with it. But you can tell he's trying to open the doors, an open border policy, so to speak, toward all that. And he is going after the most traditional of the traditional Catholics. So, for example, Catholics who like a Latin Mass, the Pope is like, I'm not really a friend of yours. Well, why not? What's wrong with a Latin Mass? There's nothing wrong with it at all. These are You would think that the Pope would go, there are some people who like to worship in the old way. They, they think that because the church began in Latin, that the Mass, in a sense, has a certain uh, kind of iconic quality when said in Latin. No one is saying you shouldn't have Masses in vernacular or Masses in Italian, German, English, and so on. But some people like to go to a Latin Mass. The Pope seems to think that those people are freaks. In, in, in other words, interestingly, another group that thinks those people are freaks is the FBI. You might have seen that the Virginia uh, wing of the FBI was like being a traditionalist Catholic who likes the Latin Mass is somehow a surrogate for being a potential extremist, a domestic extremist, which can then somehow lead to you becoming a domestic terrorist. And so... This is the, the sort of pressure that traditional Catholics are under. And now Bishop Strickland finds himself dismissed. For what? 
uh, normally it's really hard to get dismissed as a bishop uh, unless you do something scandalous. I mean, you're, you know, uh, I don't know, you're, you're de sort of degrading or desecrating the sacraments or you're sort of stealing the holy water. I mean, you have to do something outrageous to get booted. And yet, here you have an Orthodox bishop booted by the Pope, who now has put a kind of uh, temporary replacement in his place. It reminds me of something that Pope Benedict once said, and he was speaking, of course, generally not about this specific case, but he said that the smoke of Satan is now within the church. And I think he meant not just the Catholic Church, the institution, but the church more broadly, the body of believers, that the church itself will see um, a, a kind of fingerprint of Satan, not just outside, out there, where you're fighting it in, as a unified church, but inside the portals, inside the pews, and inside the ruling authorities of the church itself. Debbie and I made a New Year's resolution. We're going to lose some weight in 2023, and thankfully, PhD weight loss came to our rescue. Debbie's lost 24 pounds. I've lost 27. We're keeping the weight off. We are now both on maintenance. The program is based on science and nutrition. No injections, no pills, no long hours in the gym, no severe calorie restriction, just good, sound, scientifically proven nutrition. It's so simple, they make it easy by providing 80% of your food at no additional cost. They tell you when and what to eat. And guess what? You can do this without ever being hungry. The founder, Dr. Ashley Lucas, has her PhD in chronic disease and sports nutrition. She's also a registered dietitian. She helps people to lose weight and most important, maintain that weight loss for life. So if you're ready to take the step of losing weight like Debbie and I have, call PhD Weight Loss and Nutrition. Here's the number, write it down, 864-644-1900, or you can find them online at myphdweightloss.com. The number again to call, 864-644-1900.